This is Mona Lisa Baseball. Attendance is up. Okay. Yeah, by 6%. 6%. So that's basically what they lost last year, I think. Oh, we have to go back. We have to go back before COVID, actually. Sure. 2019. Okay, I have the number. Okay. Attendance is up, but it's down from 2019. So it's up 6% from last year. Okay. And you could blame a decent amount of that on COVID. Bro, it could be good weather. I don't even, you know, like how much data do we need really to, well, you know? <laughs> I mean, this is exactly what I stated. There is going to be a little uptick because there's going to be all kinds of news and there's going to be talk about baseball for the first time in a while. Yeah, it's sexier now. And so that's happening. It's faster. Uh, whether it's sustained or not, we don't know, but... That's pretty much what I expected. A little uptick. The league's probably popping corks. I mean, honestly, is 6% when you're talking about recovering still from the COVID slump? Is that even really, you're still not up to 2019 numbers? You did say last time that April was the least, what was <laughs> The it? lowest attendance, yeah. Okay, opening day always gets big numbers. But yeah. the cold days and the spring months, according to what I've been reading, the lowest attendance games. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what do you make of this? Attendance mm. is up. I really need to correlate this with the National Weather Association. You know, let's see. I don't know. Like, is weather better this year or last year? Did COVID take a huge chunk out of it? People are ramping back into the sport. I don't know. I think it's insignificant, to be honest with you. I think if it was up 20%, that would be a big deal. Yeah, that would show some. Yeah, this is like the equivalent of, I heard last year or whatever, inflation was up 6%. <laughs> so you're like, you're seven ninety nine burritos at eight twenty nine. Like, oh my god! In this case, we got to look at population growth. I guess you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens in May. So attendance is up. That's great. Congratulations, Major League Baseball. This isn't a time to hate on success. It's one of those things where you know we're right back to if all this new stuff works and baseball is thriving, and I don't like the sport as much as I like the old one. That, I mean, that's on me. The fear is. You get a little uptick, and then people start wondering later, eh, why do I care a little less about baseball? And mm. it doesn't seem like you can tweak a few things and get a groundswell of enthusiasm towards an old slow sport. Yeah, I saw the second Avatar. Didn't we talk about that? No, I didn't see it. Yeah, just just stay away, man. It Was it that bad? Did you hate it? When Sam and I walked out, it was kind of like, Wow. And we got in the car and we had a 30 minute drive home. And so we had time to talk about it. Yeah. And the first thing I asked her was like school wise letter grade. <laughs> yeah. And she gave it a C plus and I yeah. gave it a C minus. All right. And basically what I had said was it was the most disappointing movie I've ever seen. Can I ask you a question? If you had to drive five minutes and pay $2 to see this movie, would your grade have changed? Oh, no, no, no. That had nothing to do with it. It was just complete junk. Nothing new happened. They basically are like, oh, so here's what they liked with the first one. Let's just reboot that. But the first one was original and the second one wasn't. Right. This is what happens when you have a bunch of people trying to make money in charge of something that's yeah. cool. That's exactly yeah. what's happening with baseball. And then let me tell you one more thing and we'll wrap up our Avatar talk. Guess what happened after what felt like 14 hours in the theater of just like, <laughs> God, please, when... <laughs> When does this end? They went ahead and set up the third movie like unequivocally. And you're like, all right, I 100% guarantee I'm not seeing the third. 100. There was too much on the line. They ha it had to be good. And it wasn't. That's exactly the type of thing you would hate. A movie made by committee you're going to hate. A movie that was like test screened yeah. into infinity. Like test screened a thousand times and like, yeah. oh, well, this is one point up. Oh, good. Okay, go with that ending because it's one yeah. half point better, yeah, right. even though it sacrifices like yeah, right. half of this whole other scene that we had before. Well, I guess there's no payoff to that anymore. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Movies don't make. Remember when every yeah. single thing in the. Oh. Okay, why is a movie better than a TV show? Because every single thing in a movie should come back later. If you're going to show a dog in the first scene, the dog needs to play a role in the movie later. Like, otherwise, fucking cut the dog. It's just pointless. Don't show me a dog. Yeah. You're just pandering to dog owners now. Okay, so here's the thing with movies now. They shoot them 17 different ways to Sunday, and then they just edit together the thing that it tests best with test screening audience. Guess what? Most people are idiots. <laughs> it, like, their opinion is stupid. But 
if you want to take data and you want to be like, look, I have this, I have this, this to show that the people like this and they're not involved in this. Now this character up better and they like this ending better. Great. You can cobble together a 65% approval movie. Great. Go for it. Yeah. I, I've lost count. Movies designed by committee. Sports designed by committee. And there it is. That's the dangerous thing about baseball because we are going to end up, I've said it a thousand times, it's going to end up with the fences coming in. It's going to be a home run derby. They're going to paint circles on the ground where the players can play. And here's the thing. Our crystal ball is fucking crystal clear because the only podcast on the internet that told you that the A's were moving to Las Vegas was this one. And guess what? <laughs> They're moving to Las Vegas. No one else told you that. Everyone was like, oh, they're working it out. Look at this beautiful picture. Oh, look at this 3D rending. Brody Brazil. Fuck you, Brody Brazil. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm so sick of this clickbait bullshit. You guys were selling a dream to a bunch of people who just want to know if their favorite team's going to stick in town. I'm so sick of the fucking media. I'm so sick of... I'm going to have an aneurysm because here's the thing, man, like baseball is important to a lot of people out there. A lot of people love baseball and not just superficially like, oh, I love football. But no, they love it. It's it, it's pure. It, they, they played it when they were a kid. It's important. It's part of the American fabric. And, you know, when you sell these dreams to people for clicks, it's like, ugh. I don't even know how to describe these days how I feel about baseball because I feel like I'm living. In, yeah, I feel like I I'm in an insane asylum and I'm surrounded by crazy people. Yeah. And sometimes I think, well, am I also crazy? Because everyone talking about baseball is just, they're insane. They're saying stupid shit every single day constantly. And they're repeating it all the time. Like, clocks are good for baseball. You know, more more ads are better. You know, like all, all these things. And I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out where I stand here. Because I want to hear people talk about, I want to hear you talk about baseball. And I realize I've been talking a lot and not letting you talk. But here's the thing. These other guys, they have nothing. The only person that is credible about baseball right now is like you and Will Clark and a couple of other people. Like um, this list is so short. <laughs> That's all I have to say. God. Well, you're forgetting Brody Brazil has a nice television face. So I'm pretty cute, too, by the way. You got to give him that. He does wear makeup. So. Uh, don't be surprised. He's not paid to be a baseball, you know, guru, one with valid opinions. He's a show. He's there to go along with what the broadcast tells him to say, and he's doing it. So I'm pretty sure I told you this, but I had a friend that went to Vegas over a year ago. He was in a taxi. The cab driver says, and this is where the A's are going to move. And he goes, wait, well, hold on. They don't know that yet, right? And the cab driver kind of looks at him and goes, like I said, this is where the A's are going to move. <laughs> and it was known. It was known by the cab driver. There yeah. wasn't any doubt. It was kind of like, uh, yeah, I know they're not going to tell you this, but this is what's happening. I live here. The writing was on the wall for everyone to read. It was known. And so when I saw that news that the A's officially are moving, <laughs> I wanted it to say next year because how insulting is it to Oakland fans to no, just like keep going to games for five years, <laughs> even though you know they're leaving. Like when the Giants were going to move to Florida, it was next season. You didn't have time to get your final game at Candlestick. That was it. This version of wait five years is <laughs> fucking crazy to me. I, I don't have a clue what that looks like. It's Raiders Plus. It's they did it. It worked for them. Okay, let me ask you this. I'd read something about a Tuesday night game. And it was kind of like the um, where everyone gets together and does something. Supposedly, they were going to fill up the stadium and show that Oakland <laughs> could get a sellout. Do you have any idea if that happened? The fact that flew under my radar tells volumes. Yeah. No, I didn't hear about didn't it. Work. <laughs> they were going to flash mob the Oakland? Didn't hear a thing, yeah. Wouldn't it fall apart if a bunch of people sat in the upper? Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing would just be like, Oh, pancake, yeah, that's a good point. Pancake. Double yeah. impact. Mount Davis comes crashing down, yeah. Oh, man. How does this sound for you? How about a July game in Vegas? No, 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 no. They'll turn on the air conditioning. It's okay. I hate Las Vegas so much. I've had to go there for conventions. I've been there a bunch of times. I hate gambling. 
it's the dumbest thing you can do with your money, everybody. I love gambling. This is now a financial advice show. The only good way to, to gamble <laughs> is when you're showing off. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? You're trying to like, Impress. this is money you've already like set aside. I'm just going to throw away this small sum of money yeah. gambling. And, it, and here's the thing. Okay. Slot machines, you're going to lose money. That's the dumbest bet on the floor <clears throat> you're paying for graphics you can play video games like these days i yeah, don't play slot machines install steam on your laptop go for it you can play games for free the only way to make money in a casino is playing poker against other players or you know the other games have better odds they're always in the house's favor the house is always going to win the only way you're really going to make money is playing against somebody else and being smarter than them and that is what baseball is all about mm. I love that you're giving gambling advice when you don't gamble. This is good. Look, I'm a game developer and a professional video game player. And so that means that, like, probability is a thing you have to understand when you want to win things, right? So, like, yeah. certain games have certain probabilities. It's just you break it down. It becomes a science. It's not even that complicated. Like, but this is a podcast about baseball. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, um, <clears throat> you know, when I was a kid, uh, I was a really big Ace fan. I really loved the A's and I loved a lot of the things that they were doing at the time because Oh yeah, those were the days. Yeah. We went to A's games. I asked my dad, I'm like, hey, take me to an A's game. And he was like, Oh, okay, yeah, let's do it. I just have a lot of fond memories of watching the A's. And the Giants, you know, watching the A the A's Giants, like, what? That was the best. Those are the two teams were fall oh. Oh, it happened. Interleague was cool, but you got that with the exhibition games. Those were actually good enough for me. I didn't need more. They gave us more. I was like, okay. It's kind of like more frosting on your cake. The only reason that I would allow extensive talk on gambling on a baseball show is because it's going to involve the sport more and more. Uh, no. Well, it's already here. Yeah. And I think there will be decisions made if they haven't already that will influence baseball due to gambling, which was never supposed to happen. 1919, that's what they tried to stop was gambling should have nothing to do with baseball americans yep. deserve a clean game yep but the only other thing i wanted to say before you unplug my mic from the gambling topic was <laughs> the only reason you are adamantly opposed to gambling is you've only felt what a nine dollar <laughs> victory makes you feel like where when you win thousands it's as good a high as any high that i've felt in my life and that might be worth something but I think the longer term you gamble, the more likely, you know, the house is going to win due to it's in the favor. But there are a small handful of people that do make a living gambling. Uh, it's the mistake that people make that when they think that they are one of the small group of people that can do that. I think it's very few that can actually. Pull yeah, that you can off. talk about gambling all you want, actually. But because I worked for the house, it's like it gives you a whole other perspective. Yeah. It's like, do you yeah. know how much rake we're taking off you, you suckers? Like, uh -huh. it's shocking how much rake there is. And it's always going up, too. Yeah. Until you have competition, then, oh, let's settle it down a little bit. Oh, loyalty program, whatever, you know. It's like the rake is like 50%, you know. It's like ridiculous. Ooh, rake's real. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because it's like turnover. Again, 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 again. Just lost 50% of your Would you like a free hotel room? There you go. <laughs> Please stay and lose more tomorrow. Yeah, no one's ever offered me shit. <laughs> you need to lose more. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or win more. They'll also, yeah. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, if you win too much, they'll also be like, hey, would you like to just presidential suite? You know, it's not that they believe in luck. It's that you're suddenly your leverage is too big. Suddenly you could place a bet that would bankrupt the entire casino. Yeah. The casino doesn't believe in luck. They know everything's broken down into probability. The A's. I'm sad, but I, I was already sad. I can't be sad now because I already cried about it. Like, I already knew they were leaving. Yeah. That's I why I don't care because I already knew this was happening. Yep. I know. I don't know that I had any emotion. I, I know I felt bad for my one friend that's been a lifelong A's fan. <laughs> so. But other than that, it's just, it's right in the category of a shoulder shrug. You're like, yeah. Well, what else was going to happen? I mean, <laughs> Uh, I didn't think there was going to be eleven billion dollar Howard Terminal. Like that didn't make any sense. So that wasn't going to happen. It was a beautiful rendering. <laughs> no, but you made me want to retrace my steps. I was never an A's fan, but I wanted to see how many A's I could name. Uh, so you got Carney Lansford, you got Walt Weiss, you got Mark McGuire, Mike Gallego, um, Terry Steinbach, Jose Canseco. You got Bob Welch, you got Eckersley, Dave Stewart, Mike Davis, 
Um, okay, that's pretty good. I know there's a guy, Storm. We've talked extensively about Ricky. Oh, Ricky, yeah. Wow, sorry I left you off there, Ricky. Jesus, that's bad. Um, all right, I can leave it at that. That's just letting people know I'm keeping it real. All right, Honeycut. We got Joe Kirk. Honeycut. Mike Moore, bro. Eckersley, dude. Come on, Tide Burns. Who is Storm? Why do I keep having the name Storm? Is it Storm Davis? I can't believe you got me with Honeycut, man. That, that was really strong. Yeah, here he is. Okay, okay, yeah. Storm Davis. Sweet. It's a good name, yeah. I'm looking at his baseball card. He has these piercing blue eyes. Oh, baby. Cool baby blues. Okay, what the fuck are we talking about? Yeah, A's are moving. We knew it was coming. <laughs> right? We're not sad. We're sad, but we already knew it was coming, so how sad can Just you be? Just drifting on this track, lubricated by the tears of A's fans. Yeah. Okay, how did we know that this was happening? Number one, I said it a thousand times, they're tanking. The A's are tanking. And people are like, are you sure? Oh, come on. And I would say this in bars, say this at the disc golf course. People would be like, well, that's so harsh of you to say. It's like, but was I wrong? How do you characterize a team with like just a few guys above the Mendoza line? It's like, they're obviously tanking. Come on, stop. Stop the cap. <laughs> stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to me. The A's were tanking. They tanked so hard. Their stadium. Oh, number two, their stadium is literally falling apart. Literally falling apart. Well, when I very first heard the news that they're officially leaving, I wrote my friend, the A's fan. <laughs> I said the thing that's probably the main reason, and we get back to my, my old buddy, Bud Selig. Oh, Bud. He stopped the A's being sold to Reggie, who would not have moved the team because he's a Bay Area guy. And I'm sure the way they were doing, you know, putting the numbers in their system was – is San Francisco Bay Area big enough for two teams? It's not, apparently. Maybe, maybe not, but let's get them out of Oakland because they haven't been selling out for a long, 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 long time. So sorry, Reggie. I'm going to sell to my buddy who will eventually either sell it to someone else or get him to move. So I think it's Bud Selig's fault. Sorry, Ace fans. Fuck you, Bud. Let's get more sound bites of this can't be a farce. I wouldn't mind if that crept in every episode okay i'll put it on the soundboard at the end of like this can't be a farce because that's kind of a a big part of the show yeah. is we're watching it become the farce that he said he won't do exactly i mean it is that he should have irony tattooed on his fucking forehead when he's saying that and now i can only picture him with his hands up because you sent me that picture he's literally surrendering <laughs> when someone has their hands up in the air and they're telling you something that sounds like a lie <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know how to teach people yeah. how to read people, but just some things are very easy to spot, in my opinion. Yeah, someone also sent me a nice smiley picture of Rob Manfred recently. He's usually smiling. Uh, yeah. Smirking? Well, I mean, he's fine. The lawyer? Nothing's going wrong in his... Yeah, he's up 6%. Told you so. I'm up 6 Told you. <sighs> oh, By the way, any gambler that brags about being up 6% is a fucking loser. <laughs> I'm up six. What? Well, I mean, if you're a baseball team and you're winning 6% more games no, no, no. This year is what over I'm year, that's good. Okay. Think of it this way. You lay down your hundred at the roulette table and an hour later, your buddy comes back and, and they say, Hey, A2, how's it going? And you're like, fucking awesome. I'm up to 106. Dude, as a nerd, I'd be legit stoked that I played that log and was holding. But I get your point. Yeah, I've heard this interesting thing happening where people are... They're twisting the analytics, and they're now saying the reason for the new rules is because analytics took over the game. Well, that's how they sold the banning of the shift. That's how they sold it. Exactly. I think it's bullshit. They sold it like, oh, we guys know you guys don't like analytics, so guess what? We're bringing baseball back to the old school, and we interviewed a guy who said that. And I love that he said it on the pot. We got it on the record because people believe that. I don't know if it's because they've been told it, a million times, but there is some truth to it. And it's not, we can't com dismiss that completely. They did shift on Ted Williams, but until about 2012, they started shifting around that time in a totally way, 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 way more. I'm not saying that analytics are not part of it, but we're forgetting the other part of the equation, which is hitters wouldn't go the other way. And that's not because coach is saying, you need to just pull the ball anyway. It's because the batter is a home run hitter. And they're like, I'm going to fucking pull the ball because that's what they hired me for. And if the whole league goes to home run hitters, 
then the thought of going the other way will happen less and less. So while analytics are involved in that, yes, but you can't just say it's only analytics. Ballplayers stopped going the other way and baseball didn't do anything about this it. This is a perfect example of analytics eating its own tail because analytics is saying yes. we want more home runs because we can win more games with home runs than with um, some of these other versatile hitters. But at the same time, it's telling them to do the shift. It's a really good strategy if no one will go the opposite <laughs> way. And that's why they kept doing it, because no one was beating the shift. I mean, it really is. And so baseball is like, well, we're not going to sit here and wait the five years or six years or 10 years that it's going to take for people to realize that we need to start drafting more versatile hitters because now we have to adjust the formula of versatile hitter is now more valuable because everyone's doing the shift it would have balanced itself out it would have if it had time here's another thing i just thought of is you know with the trend of bringing the ballpark smaller and the players getting bigger that is going to add to the doesn't matter where they're playing if it's only 312 to right, just fucking hit a homer. Yeah. You know, it just adds to that where the fences come in and it becomes less irrelevant what the defense is doing and just swing for the fences, Johnny. And then, you know what? I just had to see such a stupid MLB commercial. I don't know how I saw it, but it was Joey Votto and A6 was always saying, oh, Joey Votto, you know, the fucking Reds yeah. fan. Oh, Joey Votto, he's so good. He's such a complete ball player, this, that, and the other. Well, there's an MLB commercial of him hitting a ball between first and second, and he kind of sarcastically says, oh, so that's a hit now? And then it's like, dish, dish, dish. that's right, baseball's back. And so I hit up A6, like, hey, what's up with your boy Joey Votto? I thought he could hit to all fields. And you know what his answer was? He's Canadian, enough said. <laughs> like, what? yep, all right, I'll go with that. Yeah. But he never mentioned that when he was a fan of his. They wouldn't be making these spots if they didn't know that there was a backlash. And they're literally mocking yeah. us. That's another thing why I feel like I'm a crazy person in insane asylum because they're kind of gaslighting us. They're like, oh, of course. Oh, you like the old game? You're crazy. It's like, we're not, no, we're not crazy. It's okay. Yeah. We can agree to disagree. Honestly, we can do that. We're not crazy, though. You guys are changing the game, it's getting a little whack. It's getting a little nuts. It's a little weird. He <laughs> shortened it a little bit. Okay, attendance up 6%, but like, honestly, it's all done in the service of the dollar. It's not making, these changes aren't making the game better. They're just making rich people richer. Well, let me give you a, <laughs> I got a full circle uh, example for you. Uh, you know, in the year 2000, we joked about that a bunch. Well, today <laughs> I just got sent a soundbite from Conan O'Brien's yeah. podcast, and he has two random people. Well, they might be part of the podcast. I've never seen it before. Two people that aren't necessarily sports fans, and they start talking about baseball. You know what the first thing he says is? He's like, yep, so they made the game shorter, which is good, and that is the standard line that I've heard yeah. every single person say. No one said <laughs> why. Yeah. It just is. Faster is better. It just is. Mm -hmm. No one has been able to talk about if you're really speeding up the game 17 minutes and you just say it's better, is that actually true? No, it's because they successfully sold the idea that baseball games were too long. They sold it. They had already they done totally that. It took years. That. They did it. Mission accomplished. accomplished. Now yeah. they can. Yeah. Yep. And now that it's established fact, they can run with it. Let's just gloss over the fact that we have more commercials than ever. Let's gloss over that. <laughs> that we have more commercials. I know. Okay. Kind of Thanks for saying that. What do we really want? We just want more ads. Let's get real. Yeah, so <laughs> Conan started doing what 8.4 is doing, and he started to mention maybe we should do this and blow it up. So you know what he said? <laughs> yeah, robots. <laughs> yeah, they mentioned robots. Okay. They mentioned robots. He goes, keep all the new rules because they're good, and just <laughs> you know, pat them on the back. Oh, yeah, we'll keep all those, but here's the one more rule that I'll implement. All right, all right. When a batter hits the ball, they can either run to first or third base, <laughs> and then they have to continue that same route if you got runners on first and third, and one went to first and one went to mm -hmm. third, they will have to cross pass oh. at one point, at which point there's like an explosion <laughs> and they light on fire for a second. Oh, great. And I'm like, okay, this is exactly this is exactly what A4 was saying. Well, all due respect to A4, those guys took it to a whole nother level. Because guess yeah, what, bro? Did. We predicted 
something that's actually being tested in the Atlantic League that nobody would have thought. Okay, which one? Designated Runner is fucking happening. Oh, yeah, right. I know. We were onto that early. Dude, I F- just... 55-man rosters, baby. Again, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I mean... Ridiculous. We said it. It's happening. I just... Oh, I mean, we're going to have... Again, we're going to have the all-defensive team. We're going to have the all... I can't even say it, man. <laughs> we're going to have the all-running team. We're gonna have... It's... it's, it's be... This is... This is my worst nightmare. And if we keep doing the show, I just, we're going to have to document the complete decline of baseball. This makes me so sad. Yeah. Well, it's happening in real time, right in front of our eyes. Designated runner is happening in, they're testing it in the Atlantic League. Do you want to know the rules? Cause like, I don't. Who, f- it's like, Jesus. Yeah. Let's it's save that so, for another episode. No, we're doing this. <laughs> oh, God. No, we're doing this. Okay. All right. Guess what? Designated runner. Okay. <sighs> allows a player who's not in the lineup to be used at any point of the game. Hey, don't sound so excited. As a substitute base runner. <laughs> oh my god, dude. They're going to start with one guy. Hey, A2, did you hear who the Giants just signed? Uh, Carl Lewis. It's going to be awesome. Really? <laughs> you don't get the joke. <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> Yeah, I mean, think about this. And this is important. We keep going back to Major League in Hollywood, but there's some pertinent baseball points that come out, even though it is Hollywood. And it's Willie Mays Hayes, the fast guy, Wesley Snipes. They had to teach him how to hit ground balls because he always hit pop-ups because yeah. he's so fast he could beat it out. Right. Well, now you don't even have to hit. Just throw him off first. <laughs> Someone walks. Uh, hey, Willie Mays Hayes. Yeah. Steal second and third. Yeah, the crowd can cheer as he comes in. They can have another commercial. Yep. Oh my God. Hogwash. For Nikes. For something like for shoes, something or Red Bull. Oh, we brought in the fast guy. Monster. I f- oh, I can't. I just can't do. I can't. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. You're doing so good. Though. I'm. I'm at the breaking point, dude. I can hear it. They're literally gonna fucking do a designated runner, bro. So they're gonna do this. Okay. Well, do we know, oh. Stat Boy? Do do we know? <laughs> do, <laughs> Do we know how many rules have gone into the Atlantic League and then got adopted? Is there like a ratio? Do I sound like a guy who wants to dig deeper? <laughs> oh, man. It's your, it's your job now. <laughs> I, I couldn't even get past the headline. Um, Time Machine says two, two to three years. One to two to three years. Oh, man. I mean, it all kind of depends on how well received this year is. And if it goes relatively well, I think they might hold for a year on new rules. But when we did our episode in October, right around playoff time is when they announced the rules for for this year, uh, last year. So, you know, probably around when everyone's distracted by World Series, whatnot, they'll let us know what's going to happen for the next year. But I think it kind of depends on how well or poor this year goes in their eyes. Yeah. Yeah, we got to wait and see still. We got enough numbers. I mean, you know, games are shorter. There's a few more people out there, but... Um, I wonder how TV numbers are. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I, I didn't really look that up. The question. That's probably the number that they care about the most, you yeah. know, and that's the, the number that, that you and me care about the least. Of course. <laughs> Wait, say my name. Why are we talking about something that isn't going anywhere? It was a beautiful rendering. I'm up six. What? I'm sweating in my stirrups just thinking about it. Just stay away, man.
the thing that's been helping me because I've had a few thoughts in the last week of just like, God, this is such a lost cause. And that's okay to feel that because basically we're, we're being beat down by the establishment, but that's what they have attempted to do. And our voice is so important if anything's to change. Without our voice, it's just that much more dangerous. And uh, you're into it. I'm into it. Let's just keep at it. I mean, I know they're not right. I know that we're right. 